Hello, hello, Mr. Shine here from HearthstonePlayers.com, bringing you another video for my Arena Quiz series. Today we're selecting Rexar and are on the hunt for the perfect Arena deck. By now you hopefully know the drill, but if you're new to this series, take a look in the description below for what the heck is going on. Hunter is considered to be one of the weakest Arena heroes, which might sound odd to you because Hunter was an absolute beast on the constructed scene until Starving Buzzard and Leroy Jenkins got nerfed, and still gets unleashed from time to time in different aggressive face variants. If this juxtaposition between Construct Success and Arena Failure seems familiar, I discussed a similar situation with Warlock in the Arena about a month ago. It really boils down to synergy. Hunter has a ton of ways to utilize Beast Synergy and Constructed to get max value from their cards, but it's not something you can count on when you draft an Arena deck. Furthermore, the Arena Hero ability Steady Shot does absolutely nothing to impact the board, which is the bread and butter of Arena Success. Inconsistent synergy plus nearly useless hero ability equals sad arena Rexar, most of the time. But sometimes everything can come together, and in those cases, beast synergy can be a fearsome thing. My advice to you in drafting your own hunter deck is to go beast or aggressive themed only if the best picks start to lead you in that direction. Otherwise, do your best to stay true to the individual cards that give you the most value, even if you are hoping that your deck is going to turn into something else. With all that out of the way, let's kick off the quiz portion of this video. A trio of interesting 3 drops. Eaglehorn Bow is likely best here since it represents removal or face damage, plus upside if you happen to draft some solid secrets. The upside means that it's slightly more expensive than Fiery War Axe, but I'm still happy with this card at 3 mana. Blade Master comes next as a 3 drop with slightly above average stats, although we're probably not going to be having many ways to heal it. Finally, Death Lord rolls in third, not because of its stats, which are quite good, but its risky death rattle. Now, I will say that the risk of Death Lord will be somewhat lower in Arena compared with Constructed, since there is a plethora of 2 and 3 drops in most Arena decks. But in a 3 strikes and you're out mode, you don't want a card to be a reason you've dropped a game, and when you play Death Lord, it occasionally makes you flat out lose the game. It has big upside, but also big downside, and the Eaglehorn Bow is almost always upside all the time. All synergy dependent cards, but I went with Kill Command which has the highest ceiling. At worst it's a 3 damage removal spell for 3 mana, not good but passable, and if I have a beast in play it becomes quite strong at 5 damage. Scavenging Hyena can be a dangerous card if I have a lot of beasts or unleash the hounds, but it's not really a 2 drop due to its poor base stats and I don't know how many beasts this deck will be packing. Finally, Freezing Trap does give synergy with my Eaglehorn Bow, but it's a card that sacrifices card advantage for tempo. In Constructed it's great because putting pressure on the opponent is exactly what the hunter wants to be doing, but there are so many poor targets in the arena that it's really just hard to justify spending a card so I can delay an opponent for a turn. A difficult choice, I ended up picking Tundra Rhino. While its stats are low, its charge ability is very useful, similar to how Stormwind Knight is useful as a 2-5 charger. Rhino can pick off an early drop and becomes a priority target for the opponent to kill due to its threatening ability. Because the Hunter doesn't have a hero ability that impacts the board, I value cards that do rather highly. Having said that, Bloodsail Raider is a perfectly passable 2-drop that has a bit of Eaglehorn Bow synergy, although it's unlikely I'll get many more weapons since the only Hunter weapons are rare and epic. Finally, Torrin Warrior comes in last because its stats are more what you'd expect from a 2-drop, and the Enrage will rarely activate. It's much more likely that it will simply die the first time something smacks into it. Deadly Shot is not always consistent, but it's strong, and when you can put the odds in your favor it can be game changing. Nothing feels better than chunking a late game minion with a 3 damage spell, especially when you can follow it up with threats of your own. Silvermoon Guardian comes next as an expensive version of Scarlet Crusader while its stats are pretty lacking. Stone Skin Gargoyles 1 damage is too wimpy to be a threat, even if it might survive a few turns. Opponents will likely ignore it or kill it without suffering a casualty. Hey, wait a minute! I thought Starving Buzzard got nerfed! You caught me, I recorded this draft pre-nerf, but didn't get a chance to play it until after the nerf went into effect. I therefore was saddled with a 3-2 for 5 mana during my run, and if the same options came up now I would probably pick Snipe, unhappily. But in this case all three cards were situational, and the Buzzard represented the greatest upside. Timberwolf is almost exclusively Unleash the Hounds dependent with its value, and Snipe can often be played around with an opponent dropping a dinky minion as fodder, or a beefy minion to eat the damage and survive. Dark Iron Dwarf is a solid minion that has utility throughout the game. It can be held for optimal buffing value if you have other options in your hand, but in a pinch a 4-4 for 4 is just fine. 
Amani Berserker is also a solid 2 drop, but it will often be a vanilla 2 3 for 2 since we don't have a way to self activate its enrage. Shield Bearer is only useful when used to protect other cards, but in an arena deck it's unlikely, and it's more likely Shield Bearer will just read spend 1 mana, heal 4 life. Spending cards on life instead of board control is a bad arena investment, and we can do better. Stranglethorn Tiger is a very solid 5 drop. The stats are good and the stealth is very useful at sniping a key target while surviving, even if you don't have board control the turn you play it. It's best in a hunter deck of course because of the potential beast synergy, but even outside of hunter I think Tiger is somewhat underrated. Jungle Panther is good, but it's usually more of a delayed removal card instead of a standalone minion, and it's vulnerable to many sweepers and removal spells despite the fact it has stealth. Furthermore, Panther is a 3 drop and the 3 slot for hunter is often quite crowded, much like how the paladin's 4 drop is often flush with options. Gnomish Inventor is not bad by any means, but you trade a bit of tempo for the card draw, and as I mentioned before, Hunter can't really rely on its inherent tr hero ability to impact the board, so taking a tempo hit for a draw can sometimes be a risky venture. Not the greatest trio, but Flare will have to do. Worst case, it's a cycle for one mana, but best case it can break a few secrets up. Two of the most popular heroes in the arena, Paladin and Mage, sometimes run secrets, and it's actually quite likely Flare will get value at some point during the run. You're also more likely to encounter other stealth minions in the arena when compared to Constructed, so Flare ends up being a card with almost no downside outside of the one mana, and significant upside. Misdirection comes in second place, yes it's a secret and yes it activates Eaglehorn Bow, but it's too easy to play around and the damage that gets directed will often be negligible. And besides, it's very inconsistent. If an enemy minion gets misdirected into one of your minions in trades, you just got two for one. Light Warden is straight up bad though, we don't have healing abilities to trigger the ability, and even if we did, the 2 HP body dies to most other cards. Sendin Shieldmaster has solid stats for a 4 drop, and many times can snipe 1 or 2 early drops before going down. Stormpike Commando is expensive for the stats, but the battle cry is useful enough to warrant consideration if worst cards were presented to us. Ironfur Grizzly is a beast, and is a 3 3 for 3 which is fine, but when compared to the Senjin, for 1 more mana we see the Shieldmaster is simply the better standalone card. Twilight Drake can be viewed as a Chillwind Yeti with slightly more variance, but it's still a clear choice here. It's a strong 4-drop that can often trade with two smaller minions, although it is vulnerable to silence and is quite weak in top deck wars. It's still better than the other 2-drops here though. Of the two, Crazed Alchemist is better since its battlecry can sometimes help you make a trade you couldn't otherwise have done. Pine Size has tempo potential, but it's usually rare you'll be able to make use of the cheaper minions, and besides, a 2-2 two -two for 2 is on the weak side. Bloodfen Raptor is a solid 3 2 for 2, and is a beast besides, so there's more hunter upside and at this point we have 4 beasts, so possible synergy is worth looking into. Bluegill Warrior isn't bad since it has charge and can remove something, but unless I'm actively removing something, its 1 HP is too low against most heroes. Freezing Trap has the same pitfalls that I discussed earlier, and unless my deck was shaping up to be pure face hunter, I will rarely pick it. Frostwolf Warlord has the potential to be big and synergizes with the big board, something I'm trying to build. Even if there's only one minion on the board, a 5-5 five, five for 5 isn't awful, and it's the best pick we have available. Hunter's Mark is great and constructed when our goal is to push through taunts for damage as much as possible, but since Hunter has no inherent way to deal 1 damage, it's almost always going to set us back in card advantage to Hunter's Mark and trade. Dalaran Mage is expensive as well as Wimpy, and the spell damage is a nice perk but not worth spending 3 mana on. Zombie Chow represents a lot of stat points for 1 mana, and when played in the early game, the death rattle is negligible. True, there are some instances it will become a dead card in my hand if I'm trying to chip away the last of an enemy's HP, but its ability to grab the board immediately out of the gate is far more useful. Oasis Snapdraw is a beast, but it's rather clunky, whose only job seems to be cleanup duty in the early game. Its value goes up if we get a handful of Houndmasters, but until that point we're leaving it alone. Snipe has been discussed before and is the weakest of the 3 cards here. None of these are great, but I felt like the Rocketeer would be the best in a Hunter deck. It's expensive charge damage, but it's still 5 damage from a hero that generally is pretty aggressive. It can be used as a finisher or a 5 damage removal spell in a pinch if I have the board otherwise. The Novice Engineer is card draw, but its body is nearly useless so it's not really an ideal 2 drop. And Wind Fury Harpy has better stats on paper compared to the Rocketeer, but I rated it to be worse. The reason is because it is at the mercy of your opponent for a turn, while the Rocketeer is 5 damage on demand. True, the Harpy represents more potential damage, 
but 5 HP in the late game isn't very safe and it's more likely your opponent will be able to spend less than 6 mana to remove it. Another Tiger, and with 5 Beasts halfway through the deck, Beast Synergy is a very real possibility. Geomancer and Dalaran Mage are both very similar in that they have poor stats in order to boost some spells, but we have very few spells at this point to make use of the spell power, so they're easy to pass up when compared to the Stranglethorn. Our 2 drops are very limited right now, and when you factor in the fact that Starving Buzzard is almost never played on 2 and it changes to 5 mana before the run is complete, we really need to get a few more early game options for the Hunter. Haunted Creeper is a fine play here, made even better by the fact that it's a beast. The Death Rattle is very tough for enemies to clear properly, and it usually can at least trade one for one with other two drops when it gets popped. Ancient Brewmaster comes next as a respectable 5-4. However, we don't have much at this time that is worth brewing, and our 4 and 5 drops are less important right now, since we have some other good options already. Wolfrider is pretty average, but as mentioned before, the 3 slot is often crowded for hunters and the 2 drop is more necessary right now. As a standalone card, Timberwolf is terrible, but given how many other beasts this deck has right now, it's actually quite strong. I don't have Unleash the Hounds quite yet, but it still represents some good trading potential, even if its body is pretty poor at 1-1. The other end mage has already been discussed, and while Wisp represents infinite value at 0 mana, it's one of the trashiest cards due to the fact it has no actual abilities. Oh man, the synergy is real! Houndmaster has a lot of targets right now, and when a Houndmaster can consistently hit with a 2-2 buff it becomes a great card, representing a 6-5 and taunt for 4 mana, plus a surprise effect on an existing minion. When there is no target available, a 4-3 for 4 is passable, but not great, however there's a lot of upside with this card in the current deck. Explosive Trap is probably the best hunter secret in the arena since there are so many 3-2s, but even with the Eaglehorn Bow it's not as good as Houndmaster, and opponents can often try to play around it. Wolf Rider is average, but average won't cut it with this set of 3. Can't I have both? My first animal companion and my second houndmaster would be both welcome additions to this deck. I ended up picking the animal companion, but don't dock anyone points if they took another houndmaster because we discussed how good the card is when surrounded by beasts. Animal companion, however, is a premier 3 drop. What it lacks in consistency it makes up for due to the fact that every possible minion summoned has huge value for 3 mana. This is a card that you could almost never have too many of in a hunter deck. War Golem is very out of place here. Aside from the fact that the other two cards are great, War Golem is a fat dude for 7, which is a bit out of place in the deck scene as how it's starting to travel down the aggressive beast synergy road. Injured Blade Master is the best here as a 4 3 for 3. Questing Adventure is not often good when played on turn 3, and I don't have a lot of cheap cards at this point that I would want to use to pump it up early. Young Priestess falls into the 1 HP trap where many hero abilities can remove it for free, throwing away your card for 2 mana. Unless I get an immediate effect from a 1 HP card, I rarely will ever pick one. Another Animal Companion, another strong 3 drop for my deck. Bloodsail Raider is useful as a 2 drop, but it doesn't have the upside of the Companion. War Golem has been discussed before, and yes, I'm starting to lack the late game, but now that this deck is shaping up to be more aggressive early on, I'm more content with relying on my hero power towards the end of games to push for the final bits of damage. Big bodies will mean less for me for, as they would for many other classes. Another Haunted Creeper for my 2 drops, I can't complain about that. Spellbreaker warrants consideration with the powerful silence and decent 4-3 body, but I do think ensuring I have 2 drops is more important right now. Silverback Patriarch is a beast, but it's a bad beast, so it's not worth me reaching for it when there are much better standalone cards available. Panther is the best of the pack, even without the beast synergy. At 3 mana, its 4 damage can often trade up, and you usually can determine where its damage goes due to the fact that it has stealth. Razorfed Hunter has a little bit of beast synergy with the Battlecry, yet while it represents more stats overall when compared to the Panther, the upside of the straight 4 damage and stealth is far greater than the 2-3 body with a 1-1 token hanging on behind. Raid Leader is a bit too expensive for the stats and ability. Consider that Timberwolf will often provide the same boost for 1 mana as a 1-1 that Raid Leader would for 3 mana as a 2-2. An easy pass on the Raid Leader. I know I'm leaving my Eaglehorn Bow in the lurch here by passing on so many secrets, but Dark Iron Dwarf is too good, especially in this deck that boasts a handful of Haunted Creepers. There's a good chance I'll have some tokens on the board leading up to turn 4, which will be able to benefit from the Dwarf's Battle Cry. Even if I don't have a target, a 4-4 four, for four, 4 is fine. Explosive Trap is tempting here, but there's more synergy in favor of the Dwarf. And Dalaran Mage, meanwhile, gets to watch from the sidelines, sad and forlorn. 
The companions keep on coming. They're still good even with three of them. Acolyte of Pain is good for generating card advantage, but the cost is tempo and we're decidedly pro-tempo this run, so we probably can't afford to sit for a turn to drop a 1-3. Explosive Trap is still decent, but until it runs up against less appealing options, it's going to remain by the wayside. Wolf Rider keeps popping up, so eventually I'm going to give in and pick it. Snipe has been discussed before, and Deckhand's 1 HP is a serious problem. My 1 Eaglehorn Bow is not consistent enough to warrant this card being chosen here, because the odds they'll both work together at the right time are slim. It's getting a bit absurd now, but I still think Companion is the better card. The stats are almost always better than Shattered Sun, and while that's a great card, it represents a weak turn 3 if for some reason I don't have something on the board. Even when I get Huffer from the Companion, it's still a 4-2 that can get its damage in immediately, and if I get Misha or a Timely Layak, they can be blowouts to set up the rest of the game. Wisp is still as bad as it ever was. I picked Zombie Chow, but I, the more I think about it, the more Kill Command seems like the better pick. I'll almost always be able to make it a 5 damage nuke for 3 mana in this deck, and Aggressive is probably better. Still, Zombie Chow is a fine 1 drop to help out in my early game trading, and it represents my 5th 1 or 2 drop minion, so it's not terrible in order to help the curve. Unstable Ghoul is an okay card due to the death rattle, but the other two are simply more solid and I think Ghoul would be more obvious as a mistake. In retrospect, I feel like this might have been a mistake as well, going for the Fen Creeper. My reasoning was that I have a lot of early minions and a well-timed taunt would help secure a good deal of extra damage. Yet even now I wonder if yet another animal companion would have been worthwhile. It's that good. Scavenging Hyena is also reasonable, since I have so many beasts that might die and it represents a big potential threat for a small amount of mana. In short, I'm mostly giving folks a pass for this pick due to multiple ways it could have gone. Another tough choice, I ended up choosing the Kodo due to the synergy and its powerful battle cry. For one more mana, I think the ability to kill an enemy's minion will be more useful for me than the teacher's combo synergy with spells. Both cards are good and Violet Teacher does have an array of animal companion spells to work with. At least I think we can all agree that Craze Alchemist is the worst of the bunch, representing a subpar 2 drop. Well that's the entire draft, let's take a second look at what sort of deck we have on our hands. Ultimately, it's chock full of beasts, with a few synergy cards like Houndmaster, Kill Command, Timberwolf, Tundra Rhino, and Starving Buzzard. It also has a lot of stealth and charge in the deck, plus a few Dark Iron Dwarves to help the early cards trade up. This has the makings of a very aggressive face hunting deck, and I'm glad I went light on the late game given how many games ideally won't even reach it. If we do get late, I'll likely supplement my mid game cards with my hero ability, with the hope being that my opponent will be too focused on surviving to really threaten me in the late game. I wish I had a few more options to draft Kill Command and Houndmaster in this deck, but I suppose I'll have to make do. What do you guys think about this draft? Are there choices you would have made differently from me? Do you agree with my Animal Companion Flood, or do you think I'll run out of steam? Any predictions for the deck? Be sure to tune in next week when I show how the run ended up, and what were some of the key points of the run. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe to Hearthstone Player's YouTube channel, which boasts a wide variety of Hearthstone content. Or take a look at my personal YouTube channel if you want to see different games and formats. As always, I've been Mr. Shine, and I'll see you next time!